lack of rain flood the minds of farmers. It has already been a tough year for farmers. I'm Theo Keith with how some corn farmers are saying the real disaster could come in in just a couple of weeks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jennifer Hoff. Thanks for joining us tonight. Now, it seems as if the oppressive heat is leaving our area, but that's leaving behind a parched landscape that's really thirsting for rain. The U.S. Drought Monitor releasing the latest conditions for southern Wisconsin on July 3rd. A map shows that south-central Wisconsin, including parts of Sauk and Columbia counties, are abnormally dry right now, and areas south of that, including Dane and Rock counties, are approaching severe drought status right now. News 3's Theo Keith headed out to a Dane County farm as one farmer is trying to save his crops. Well, Jennifer, for corn and soybean farmers, there's not much that can be done. They need rain, of course, but it's not coming. The corn stalks are crispy, the soil cracked, the landscape losing life. It should be a lush green color. That white sheen that you see is it literally it's dying. Jerry Bradley's optimism is drying up along with his corn and soybeans. It was off to a good start. We had a great spring. Things looked really good, and then the faucet shut off. It hasn't rained on his land near Sun Prairie since Memorial Day. The concern for corn is immediate. I don't think it's a total loss yet, but it's, it's looking worse every day. You can see the problem out here pretty easily because the corn is supposed to be at my shoulders right about now, but the real problem is going to come in in about 7 to 10 days. When the tassel shoots out of these plants, there won't be anything to pollinate because it'll burn up first. If we don't get some rain before it, to the tassel shoots out to pollinate, it'll be a total loss. Right now, I think I'd be happy with half a crop. Across the farm, Bradley's soybeans are hanging in there and would be fine if it rains. No matter the loss, insurance will help, but there will be a financial hit. Bradley says that pain will get passed along to all of us. All those prices will be affected at the store. You will see your grocery bill go up. Now, there's so many products that use corn, so many products that use soybeans. With all this gloom under sunny skies, we had to ask, is there anything that grows well in this dry heat? If I knew what it was, I'd plant it. <laughs> and you heard Bradley. He says he does have insurance, but a lot of growers don't have it because it's simply too expensive. So they, of course, are in an even more uncomfortable spot. You look at the forecast, and it does not look good for corn. Hmm, tough for those farmers. Yeah. Thanks, Theo. Oregon firefighters spent this evening putting out a fire at a condo on Prairie Grass Road. Now, this is video from one of our viewers showing flames shooting out of the building. Multiple agencies responding to this fire, which took about a half an hour to extinguish. Witnesses tell News 3 that no one was home at the time. The fire also damaging a nearby building, and the cause of that is still under investigation. Columbia County Sheriff's Office reporting a motorcyclist is dead after crashing. A passenger hurt. It happened in the township of Lodi around 6.30. Authorities say while alcohol isn't a factor in the wreck, speed is. Both people went to UW Hospital. That's where the driver died and the passenger is being treated tonight. The Sheriff's Office saying neither person was wearing a helmet. Let's turn now to our forecast with meteorologist Bob Lesh. Bob. And we are looking at a much cooler forecast. That's the good news. The bad news is it still looks very dry for this coming week. 77 our current temperature. Two points down to 60 degrees. That north northeasterly wind has really helped things dry out and cool down as we've moved through the day today. And you see everybody now down into the 70s. 73 in the Wisconsin Dells. 70 up in Camp Douglas. We've even got 68 up in Black River Falls. So a very pleasant evening. And tomorrow should be a very pleasant day. Starting out at 62, we'll get up to 83 three for the high Jennifer Bob thanks and across the country that heat it's being blamed in at least 30 deaths here in Wisconsin Milwaukee County officials are investigating three deaths that could be heat related those happening yesterday and authorities would only say all the victims were adults those would join confirmed heat related deaths in Rock Richland and La Crosse counties from this week a Green Bay, Green Bay mother is jailed after police had to break open her car windows and rescue her 10 week old baby from the hot car. Police say the infant wasn't moving and the car was locked with all the windows locked up yesterday at a Walmart parking lot. The child was treated and released to another family member. The 24 year old mother faces charges of child neglect. And as those stories show, keeping cool was essential to staying safe this week and a state organization saved at least one woman from a dangerously hot week. News 3's Heather Burian has that story. I didn't know what else to do. On a day when temps soared past the hundreds, Lottie Truman dreaded being inside. I had the fan going and I'd be sitting like this with the fan blowing right on me. 
like this and, and I'd, I'd be sipping water. Her thermostat read 102. It was like you were in an oven. <laughs> if you can imagine something that's that hot. Her air conditioner broken. My shirt just got soaking wet from perspiration. A phone call to the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Funds saved the 80-year-old's life. They're the ones that got me uh, my air conditioning a few years back because the doctor said I needed it for my health. What we were able to do is respond to an 11th hour call for help, you know, uh, with an air conditioner that uh, she needed uh, just to basically survive. Tim Brewer with the Warm Cool Fund was able to repair Truman's air conditioner a few hours after she called at no cost to her. These are people who at no fault of their own are choosing between eating and heating. And it took every ounce of strength I had yesterday to survive. With her newly fixed AC, Truman can chill for the rest of the weekend. And I won't do nothing today except set hair and drink ice water. <laughs> Heather Burian reporting. You can make donations to the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund by sending a check to P.O. Box 68 in Madison. You can also donate by calling 333-0809. In North Carolina, Electrolux donated more than 900 air conditioners to families in need. People who received a unit say their homes have been in the hundreds during this heat wave. About 80 people have gotten a unit so far, and organizers expect the rest to get snapped up soon. And thousands of people in West Virginia still don't have any power a week after storms knocked it out. Residents are finding relief by getting water and ice from places that are giving it away. A Milton man is recovering tonight after getting hit twice by the same car this morning. Milton police say Philip Ulius was intentionally struck by a car after getting into a fight with the driver and two passengers. Police say the 24-year-old was hit in the area of Merchant Row and Crandall Street around 2.30, and then the car drove around the block and struck him again. He suffered non-life-threatening injuries. In town of Madison, police are investigating an armed robbery that happened yesterday afternoon. Police say a man with a gun approached a woman at an office building on Woodview Court and took her purse. It happened around 3.30, and the robber appeared to be in his late 20s, about six feet tall with a slender build. Work will resume on an Oshkosh bridge where a construction worker died Thursday. Safety officials will allow work to start up again after a crane collapsed and killed a 35-year-old Green Bay man. Now, this is the second fatal accident for Lunda Construction. The company could be labeled a severe violator, which means it will have to comply with more inspections. Next at 10, a Janesville teen is putting together an ambitious project to become an Eagle Scout. Rock County reporter Margo Spann shares how he brought together many organizations for a fundraiser that's going to benefit the community. Close to 30. Cars here. These showstoppers lined up on the UW Rock County campus are part of Travis Sommerfeld's Eagle Scout project. This fundraiser here, Travis put together. It was his idea that he wanted to do a car show. I said, "Fantastic!" You know, I'm, I'm into cars and I work on them all the time. So I said, "That's a great idea." So let's let's see what we can get to work with. The money from the car show and silent auction will provide scholarships for Janesville area students to attend UW Rock County. It gives uh, other people a chance to save a little bit of money for. So they're not paying so much money. It's so exciting for the university to have a youth in the area looking for an opportunity to help his community do better things. And so we were excited to partner with him. From classic muscle cars to tricked out roadsters, this car show has a little something for everyone, including a bit of a history lesson. We've seen it, all of us people in our 50s, 60s, and 70s. We've seen this. Kids love old cars. I love old cars. I think this is wonderful. All these beautiful cars. Kids nowadays don't know what it's like to have these old cars. Travis's dad says he's extremely proud of what his son has accomplished. I'm happy that, happy that he picked out that he was going to do a car show. And the amount of the time and effort that he's put in for the show has just been fantastic. I've had to kick him in about a couple of times, but he's, he's been kicking with it. And he, he's stuck with it the whole way I'm through. In Janesville, Marco Spann, WISC News 3. And if you'd like to contribute to Travis's goal to help provide scholarships to UW Rock County, head to this website, rock.uwc.edu backslash foundation. Coming up on News 3 at 10, Bob returns with the rest of our weekend forecast. And we haven't seen heat like this in many decades, with many records dating back to the 30s. We'll hear from one woman who lived through both heat waves next. You're watching News 3 at 10.
around the country, we shattered weather records that have stood since the 1930s. In Michigan, the record high of 108 degrees was set back in 1936. Ruth remembers those days. She was just 10 years old at the time. Back then, her house recently uh, had electricity installed, but she says her family didn't have any fans, and she remembers sleeping on the living room floor with the doors open. My folks, being farmers, talk about how dry and how hot it was and how we needed rain. We've had hot times, but not as long and as severe as that was. Well, how did you uh, keep cool in 1936? You didn't. <laughs> she says surviving those days makes her appreciate all of our modern conveniences like fridges, fans, and of course, air conditioning, which is what I was just going to say. If we ever complain about being <laughs> hot, we just go flip on our AC. Right, not yeah. that easy back then. Right, and uh, nowadays you might actually be able to turn it off, believe it or not. We're finally going to be breaking our heat, and uh, of course, we saw one more hot day today, although some of us already saw our relief. Only 82 in the Wisconsin Dells, 81 in Juneau today. Madison closer to 90, but not quite 90, 89. So we broke our streak of 90 degree days, and it was still very hot early in the day in Janesville and Monroe. They got up close to 100. It was in the mid 90s in Mineral Point and Platteville as well. So as I mentioned, our streak of 90 degrees broken 89 for the high today in Madison. Our low is very warm at 77 and uh, we also broke a couple of other streaks. Our, we had 10 consecutive days, 90 degrees or more. That's our third longest streak ever. Seven consecutive days of 95 degrees or more. Our second longest streak and three consecutive triple digit days. Also our second longest streak. The first longest streak set back in the 30s. So our current condition 77 degrees. We're looking at northeast winds at 10 miles per hour. Dew points are down to 60 degrees, and they'll continue to fall a little bit as we move forward into the rest of our weekend. Current temperature 77 in Madison, 79 in Janesville and Mineral Point. We're even a little bit cooler up to the north, right close to 70 degrees at 72 in the Wisconsin Dells and 71 in Watoma. The other big story, of course, is the dew points falling. So at 60 in Madison, but some places now into the 50s. Wisconsin Dells 55, only 50 in Janesville. A little bit uh, still sticky out to the southwest. We're looking at a dew point of 67 in Basketball, but we will see those probably fall to around 60 degrees where they should stay pretty steady for early next week. Weather track, uh, unfortunately, showing a few showers that were not in our area in northern Illinois today. Other than that, we were very dry and we saw a lot of sunshine, a trend that we will see continue for this coming week as temperatures will remain cooler, but the rain just isn't going to work its way in. In fact, we have no rain in our forecast all the way out to next weekend. So this is going to be a very dry forecast where once again the storms will be to our south, they'll be up to our north, but they are not going to be here in the upper Midwest. So overnight, 62 degrees for the low. It'll be much less humid, so we'll be able to be a bit cooler and more comfortable to start the day tomorrow. By noon into the middle 70s, our high will be very typical of this time of year in the lower to middle 80s, 83 for Madison. For Monday, 82 for the high, another very pleasant day. Again, the humidity will stay down at least until midweek as our temperature Temperatures stay right around 80 degrees. Later in the week, though, we'll be back into the mid 80s. The humidity will start to creep up a little bit again. But again, that humidity will not translate to any more rain. So I don't even have a single raindrop on there because I couldn't find a good enough chance of rain to put it in there. Man, oh man, and like Theo Keith was saying earlier in the newscast, that's just something we really need right now. Well, yeah, and I mean, we are in drought condition, obviously. By the time the next drought monitor comes out, which happens every Thursday, almost certainly uh, most, if not all, of our viewing area will then be in a drought. We could even see some places approaching kind of the severe drought criteria. Right now, it's a moderate drought from basically Dane County and Point South. Well, hopefully we'll get some rain soon, then, yeah. Bob. Thank you. All right, next at 10, we are on your side. If you're heading to the beach, we've got a simple way to protect the gadgets that you like to bring along. There's a new leader at the U.S. Women's Open. Moving day highlights from Kohler later in sports.
paper on your side as the heat hits asthma sufferers. More than 25 million Americans suffer from asthma and symptoms could be getting worse during this heat wave. Medical experts say extreme dryness forced the body to work harder, making it more difficult to breathe. And high humidity brings out mold spores, which can set off an attack too. The best ways to lessen the chances for an attack are to stay inside with air conditioning, keep hydrated, and check the federal website, airnow.gov. That'll show you what the air quality is like in your neck of the woods. And if you'll be spending time at the beach to beat the heat, make sure you protect the gadgets that you plan to bring along. While there are a lot of protective cases on the market for your phone or computer, consumers found a simple Ziploc plastic baggie works just fine. Tech experts warn it's not a good idea, though, to leave your electronics in direct sunlight. It's a good idea to keep the device out of the sun, keep it somewhere cool, like in a bag, a little bit insulated even would be good. Don't leave it in the car. Uh, pay attention to that. 95 degrees to 100 degrees is sort of the max that you should be looking at. If you do get water on your gadget, remove the battery and SIM card as soon as possible and then just let everything air dry. And a new gadget could be joining your other ones. There are rumors Apple is creating a mini iPad. It would be about seven or eight inch version of the tablet. The talk comes after Google announced its own smaller tablet, but there's no official word from Apple yet. So diehard Apple fans, you don't need to line up just yet. And it looks like Best Buy is taking a bite out of Apple's playbook. Best Buy is reportedly setting up a help desk in its stores that looks like Apple's own genius bar. There's a sample of Best Buy's Solution Central in one of its Minnesota stores. Employees of the Geek Squad will run this help desk. Coming up, the Brewers endure a bizarre first inning. All the reactions from this afternoon's ejections coming up next in sports. News
Sports. What a bizarre day for the Brewers in Houston. The crew lost 6-3, but that's not the big headline of the day. The story of the game happened two batters into the bottom of the first inning when the Brewers starting pitchers at Greinke and manager Ron Renneke rejected. Here's what happened in the first inning. A runner on third, Houston's Jose Altuve grounds to Corey Hart. Greinke is a little late to get to first to make the play. Umpire Sam Holbrook calls him safe. Greinke then throws the baseball down, seemingly mad at himself for missing the play, and then the first base ump tosses Granky from the game. Granky pleads his case, saying he was not he was mad at himself, not the call. Manager Ron Renneke comes out for Granky's defense, and yeah, the umpires never really change the call when the manager yells like that. So with no outs in the first, the Brewers lose their starting pitcher and their manager. Granky threw just four pitches, but to add injury to insult, he gets the loss. There is a chance he could pitch tomorrow, but the Brewers weren't sh for sh didn't know for sure. Here's some reaction from the clubhouse. We're, we're taken out of a, a game in the first inning. And, uh, and trying to scramble and figure out what we're going to do. He said he, uh, he thought Zach showed him up, was, uh, was mad at the call, he, uh, and that, that was basically it. I never make my mistakes like that, so I guess that just was really upset with myself. Uh, and the same thing, I don't blame the umpire for what he did. It, I mean, I didn't mean it towards him. I thought the guy was safe. Definitely didn't look like how I meant it, so I put the umpire in a bad position. NASCAR is under the lights tonight for the Coke 0400. Matt Kenseth is trying to become the first driver since 1982 to sweep both races at Daytona. The Cambridge native won the Daytona 500 back in February. And tonight he starts on the pole. Drama on the last lap. Kenseth has the lead last lap, but Tony Stewart passes him. Then there is a crash, a caution comes out, and Tony Stewart takes a checkered flag of the Coke 0400. Tough loss for Kenseth, who pretty much led most of the way. He takes third. No, you can always second guess your moves all night long, but I thought we did good to get back to the front after the unfortunate caution. And I thought we were in perfect position. That last lap, it gets crazy. Everybody gets shoving, and you don't really know what's going on yeah. two or three rows behind you. So I uh, did the best I could. Just disappointing we came up short because uh, these guys gave me an awesome car. It was much cooler and colder today for the third round of the U.S. Women's Open. It was also a record-setting day at Black Wolf Run. Na Yao Choi shoots a 7 under 65. That is the lowest round for a U.S. Women's Open ever at Black Wolf Run. And it's the third lowest score in the event's history. Michelle Wee shot a 66 yesterday, so her record stood for a grand total of one day. Choi is 8 under for the tournament. She has a 6-shot lead heading into the final round. Amy Yang is in second at 2 under. The final round is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Round three of the Greenbrier Classic, Webb Simpson birdies 18 to take a four-shot lead into Sunday's final. As for the Madison golfers, Jerry Kelly started the day in second. He is 11th now after shooting even par eight under. Steve Stricker shoots a two under six under for the tournament. The final round can be seen right here on Channel 3 Sunday starting at 2 o'clock. Minnesota Vikings star running back Adrian Peterson was arrested early Saturday morning in Houston on a charge of resisting arrest. The incident occurred outside a downtown nightclub. A team spokesperson for the Vikings said, quote, we are aware of the situation and gathering more information. No further details were available on the arrest. The ladies final of Wimbledon, Serena Williams wins her fifth Wimbledon singles title, tying her sister Venus. It's her 14th Grand Slam title of her career. She beats Agnesta Rozwanski in three sets. Serena is the first woman in her 30s to win Wimbledon since Martina Navratilova did in 1990. The men's final tomorrow, it should be a dandy as Roger Federer takes on Britain's Andy Murray. Murray is trying to become the first British man to win Wimbledon since 1936.